Hey everyone, I am Matt and welcome back to Mr. Canucks Grow. If you are new to the channel, I post every single week on Sunday, so if you like what you see, then don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. This way, you won't miss next week's episode. I have quite a bit to go over this week's video, starting off in the 5x5 flower tent. We are at the end of week 8 of flour for this Girl Scout cookie and Gorilla Glue Grow. I have 12 plants in 1.5 gallon pots under 820 true watts of LED. The plants are showing their beautiful fall colors the closer we get to harvest. They're using up the store nutrients to finish flower the same way nature intended. This process decreases chlorophyll levels which provide higher quality flowers with insane terpene profiles. There hasn't been a lot of chores in the 5x5 because we're at the end of flower, but the plants still need to be watered when dry. Since I'm using organic dry amendments, it's best to pH around 6.8, and during the last week of flower, I won't even pH the water at all. When it comes to watering, I'm doing it all by hand. I don't use any automation because I have four small grows and only one main water res area. Typically, it's a quick process to water, but this is the first time in the 5x5 I'm doing a 12 plant run in smaller pots. Normally, I do like four to seven plants in bigger pots, which is obviously a lot easier to manage. I also don't water with any runoff. If there is anything in the drip tray, it will just get sucked back up into the pot within a few minutes. Some other important things to stay on top of at the end of flowering is removing all of the dead and dying yellowing leaves that will shrivel up and fall off. Some will actually get stuck inside the buds, which can be problematic for mold and unwanted pests. The other crucial thing to the health and final potency and yield is the growing environment. Higher temps late in a flower can reduce the potency and affect the smell and taste of your flowers by burning away the cannabinoids and terpenes. In addition to maintaining a clean grow, keeping the humidity down between 40 and 50% in the flowering stages will help you avoid PM and mold issues. Now we're in the Electric Sky ES300 Closet Grow. Things have been moving along quickly. All of the plants are in perfect health and are putting on a few inches of growth every single day. This is a five day time lapse and at this rate, the trellis will be ready to go in next week and she'll be ready to go into flower. I have eight plants in one and a half gallon pots which now seem stuffed into this eight by two closet grow. These plants are becoming bushes, so it's a good time to clean out the lower canopy. This is called lollipopping, which is removing the lower growth, which is not receiving enough light while leaving the top of the plants untouched. This transfers the plant's energy upwards to the main sites, but also improves the grow environment, allowing for better airflow in and out the plant's canopy and reduces the risk of bugs. The one thing I've always noticed after lollipopping is the temperatures and RH of the room come right down. But that's it for this grow, let's move it on to the smaller closet grow, the autoflowers. Mm -hmm. 
We're also coming to an end in this small 3x2 closet grill where I have 6 small auto flowers and 3 gallon pots. We have the bloody skunk from Sweet Seeds which has some of the most beautiful colors I've ever seen on a plant. The Moby Dick Auto from Dina Femme are boasting massive cannons which are surreal to see in person. This is 11 week hybrid sativa dominant auto flower that doesn't know when to stop putting on weight. The only training I did on these autos was LST with some super cropping. I also did some selective deleafing, but that was it. The Moby Dick shows excellent balance between potency, yields, and intense flavors and aromas with a long lasting, powerful high packed with sweet citrus fruit notes. I find the Moby Dick auto genetics pretty consistent. This is the other Moby Dick XXL which has similar size colas but seem to have slight variance in aesthetics. But they do smell the same. I also have two very quick flowering strains from Sweet Seeds. The Crystal Candy which straight up smells like a candy shop and it only takes 8 weeks to flower and finish from germination. And the Cream Mandarin which is an indica dominant auto flower that only takes 9 weeks from seed to flower out. I planted these two auto flowers into one and a half gallon pots instead of three gallon pots because of how quick they finish. They never grow into tall plants. I do prefer the taller autos but I think you could do well with these genetics if you did a sea of green style and had a lot of them in one gallon pots jammed up against one another in a flood and drain. I prefer dry trimming all my cannabis so in order to prep these plants for the drying process I'm only removing dead or dying fan leaves. By dry trimming and leaving the leaves on the flowers to dry I'm able to extend my dry time. It's important the flowers don't dry too quickly because they will lose flavor and not pack a punch it could have had. And it gives you a harsher smoke. Also, don't let it take too long to dry because that will also give you mold and completely ruin your hard work. Ideally, you should be aiming between 7 and 12 days for your dry period and an optimal dry environment is between 68 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% relative humidity. The three Moby Dick and one Bloody Skunk still need a little more time to finish off so they remain in the 3x2 closet grow under their one Mizey 600 and one Mars Hydro Pro 80. On top of the auto flower harvest we also have the 5x5 harvest which is around the corner so my work is cut out for me. I just want to remind everybody that coupon codes and links to all the grow equipment you see in this video they're linked down below. If you want to show your support just leave a like, drop a question or comment down below. Those things dramatically help the channel grow. I love to hear from you so let me know what's up.